This is a very, very interesting sector because I see it as a strategic part of what we, what we know around the development of Africa. Um, and um, we always hear about the, the $94 billion a year that is needed to develop infrastructure. Obviously, cement is fundamental to that. What is very, very interesting is, and we can all go back and read the figures, but I think it's interesting that we just highlight some of them. Um, the per capita consumption of cement on the African continent is on average about uh, 90, kilograms, 90 kilograms per person. The world average, the global average, is well over 500 kilograms per person. And that includes China, so it's around 520 kilograms per person. What, what we are seeing then is that there's this enormous potential around the supply. And even though we are seeing this incredible investment uh, from Dangote all the way down south here, the cement in Africa is over 200% more expensive than anywhere else in the world. So that is, that is something that is, is quite fundamental. It's mostly around the fact that obviously cement is a capital intensive um, industry. It's, it's quite complicated. But it's um, the underdevelopment of financial markets and the ongoing or the continual changes in the policy environment in Africa which has hampered the development of the cement industry. The other, the other obviously, the, the other tripwires, if you like, or the, the difficulties that we see, the, the obstacles, um, the availability, obviously cement, uh, we need lime deposits, so the availability and the, the proximity of these lime deposits is fundamental. Poor infrastructure, inadequate power and water supply, we need a lot of that. Um, that's, that's obviously a major constraint. Inconsistencies, as I mentioned, in policies and regulations. Uh, you know, this, this Trans uh, East African Railway project actually was bringing in Chinese cement, despite the fact that they've got a thriving cement industry in Kenya and the rest of East Africa. They've now lobbied through the Kenyan Association of Manufacturers to change that, but that was one of the, the ways the Chinese came in. And it was another example of the lack of diplomatic sophistication when we're negotiating these deals with bigger powers like China, Brazil, and all the rest of them. But they've come back, unfortunately, and they've clawed their way back, and, and the likes of Bamburi and Arm are supplying cement for those, those big projects as well. And then obviously competition from the cheap, and I must em emphasize inferior products uh, coming from Pakistan, China, and all the rest of it. Um, we see this across Africa. We've taken some of our groups here at Gibbs, we've taken them to the cement plants in Nigeria, to the BC plant, which is, a, a, they produce six million tons of cement a year. By the way, our, our, the gross production or the gross capacity that, that PPC have, that's the entire PPC, is eight million tons. So the one plant that Dangoti has in Nigeria is producing the entire production of, of that. That's just the one plant. Anyway, and that production is, um, we were looking at the, the stress tests and all the rest of it. That's a high quality product. Park your assumptions. Don't think that they are inferior products. They are not. Very interestingly, uh, just to, and I, I wanted us to go into some of the companies because um, uh, that, that's one of the, that was one of the, the areas that the book did actually cover. Many of us don't know, um, and it's, uh, it's, I suppose it's, um, it might be contested to some level, but the largest company in Africa is Dangote. It's a $25 billion company. So if you look at the listings here, obviously Anglo-American BHP, those listings here, but their listings are mostly in, in London. Dangote, Dangote, the conglomerate, but mostly cement, is a $25 billion company. This is big. Does anybody know what PPC is? $2 billion. If Dangote wanted to, they could come and they would uh, they're just, there we go. So size, I know size does not always matter, but in Africa it does to some degree. Um, it's a very, very important point because where they have size, they have capital and they can actually extend their product, uh, their, their, their projections across the continent. Uh, Dangote is rolling out across uh, more than 30 markets at the moment. They've just invested $500 million in Ethiopia. Incidentally, Ethiopia and the DRC have got that uh, the consumption of cement of around 25 kilograms per person. Ethiopia, 35 kilograms per person. If you look at the population dynamics with that as well, Ethiopia's got nearly 100 million people. This is where we're going to see the showdown of cement and concrete on the continent because PPC, ironically, is also opening up plants in Ethiopia, southern Rwanda, the DRC, and that's exactly, or well, that's precisely where, uh, where Dangote is going. So it's going to be a very, very interesting uh, dynamic that we see. The other thing, obviously, these are the two largest economies or representatives from the largest economies. So we're almost seeing kind of a Nigeria-South Africa standoff in these, these places. But PPC, having said all these things about, around size and how it matters, if you go and visit uh, Dangote and you go to the corporate headquarters, this idea that a family business going global that needs to corporatize and professionalize um, is still a far way away. They're trying to list on the London Stock Exchange. This is something they've been speaking about for the last eight years. I can't see it happening because of uh, compliance issues and all the rest of it. Uh, PPC is seen by Dangote and by everybody else as the most efficient, the most professional cement entity on the African continent. 
with obviously origins in Africa. It's an old company, started in 1892, listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange since 1910. Dangote was established as a cement importer and trader effectively uh, about 30 years ago.